Shirts and skins, let's get it. Yo. Shirts and skins, and we back again. The best coverage in college sports, we come to win. With Brandon, Mark, and Matt, no one go hard as that. Share with your folks, and they'll learn where it all be at. It's just three of the guys, childhood friends that be setting the vibe with a few hot takes, jokes, and predictions. Love the Boise State. We now welcome you to listen. Shirts and skins, let's go. I don't know that you need to share with your folks. I mean, I guess you can. I, I think they should share with their folks. <laughs> I know we have. I just don't know. <laughs> just don't know the interest level of sharing with your folks. Well, folks could mean a lot of different what things. What about your parents? Like your Are kin- they going to share with their folks? Your kinfolk? Ah, kinfolk. Maybe we need to reach back out to Rich Lotta. <laughs> Maybe he can like do an update on <laughs> kinfolk. Share it with your kinfolk. <laughs> I think that's more of a Southern reference. Yeah. Uh, welcome back to the Shirts and Skins podcast. We got Matt Lamb here, Brandon Minert, Mark Moss in studio, United Commercial Insurance Studios, coming to you. It's hot on a it's Tuesday hot afternoon. Hot Tuesday afternoon. Yeah, it's this is today. unusual. It's first, we're usually middle of the day. Usually doing it on a Sunday or or at night. Or at night. How are we feeling today, boys? Good. Feeling good. good. We're back up. We're back. Get that music going. For whatever reason, the tail left. Uh, like, the left tail. me. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, we're coming off a <clears throat> bowl. Well, hold on, hold on. Before we get, oh. what kind of surprises do we have for me today? Two times See, ago, if we you tell had the you, podcast. Nope, Last time, you had nope. all the old tweets pulled up. Yeah. See, Mark, if we tell you, it's not a surprise. All right. See how we throw me under the bus today. I'm Why don't you do that. some homework then? <laughs> how about that? Oh, Mark's got and not just prep, today. not prep work. Actual like no, go no, back no. to it. I don't do homework. No, I ain't gonna do that. No way. How are your computer skills, Mark? Skills? Like yeah. I, I like Excel 2002 Brandon, edition. Brandon had to go and edit that sound clip for you. Yeah, I can't do that. He did clown music. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> that was good. That was you, good. You're not doing that. I'm not doing that. Dude, my son the other day said, Dad, you did a your buddy did a cold plunge. He's six years old. Yeah. He's like, Your buddy did a cold plunge and all you could do was laugh. <laughs> oh, oh, Mark! I was like, laughs no, there. all we could all. He's oh, like, you yeah. were all just laughing, and I was like, yeah, I just for whatever reason it was really funny, <laughs> really funny. <laughs> and he's like, you guys just laughed the whole time. Uh, just had to be here, maybe. Do you think and anyone else like, laughed? Just, or just I don't think they did. Know. Yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> oh, I'll, um, <clears throat> side note on the cold plunge, not here, but back in action, nice working. <laughs> Don't send this <laughs> back in action working. So happy to have that. So we could crank that thing down to 37. Ooh. Ooh. So watch your hot, yeah. hot take. Watch the hot takes. All right. Can we get into it now? Let's Mark? get into it. Let's get into it. All right. We had a little bit of a bowl game on Saturday. We lost. Yeah. We won the first half. First half looked good. Second half, not so Can good. Can we have like a half sack record? Like if know. you win half the half oh, of the game, can oh. you be like a like it goes to overtime? No, <laughs> like what, what was our final record? What was it like eight, eight and six. six? So it's like seven and oh. or eight and a half and five and a half. Can it be that? It cannot be that. That does not work. Yeah, Dude, I hate rough. bowl games. I hate bowl. I hate yeah. non. Pa- I hate non New Year's Day bowl games. It, they're just they're they're exhibition games at best. They used to be great. I thought they used to be. You know. It's different now. But there was some but intrigue with this I, one. I mean, C and CJ coming out. That's so, it, though. That's the only, happen. and it's only our intrigue. Um, yeah, nationally, it was a <laughs> right? nothing. It was a, yeah. It was a nothing burger. The biggest the biggest national news out of that was Gronk, you know? That was and fun. Then, and, and the then Blitz. Chip Kelly making some comments before. and Yeah. Uh, that, the, you know, and we can get into that a little bit later. But the, the actual game, yeah. I mean, we didn't, you know, UCLA, we talked about we didn't have a quarterback, which we didn't. And you can tell, uh, obviously, watching that game, UCLA, they had, what, their third string quarterback in for some reason starting. He could run it, couldn't throw it great. And the minute they flipped to Garbers, who was a starter for a lot of the year, I mean. He killed us. And, and so that just goes to show, like, the difference in, and I think we should talk about this, having a quarterback, <laughs> a decent quarterback, not a great quarterback, and a great quarterback is just so that that's what changed the game, obviously. And so, I mean, you could argue if we had Taylor Green, we win that game. But that's why um, that's why bowl bowl games but, are yeah. so dumb. It's yep. like it's always this what if game. Yeah. What if you have everybody playing? What if all of your, what if your starting quarterback wasn't playing for Arkansas 
five days after. <laughs> what if the game actually mattered? So here's the, I, the game mattered. I, I don't want to throw it all away, though, and I do want to talk about it because I think it, more than anything, it leads us into next year in a few ways. Going into this game, listening to the Boise media, they were all very confident, not only that they thought we might win the game, um, but that Boise State was the more motivated team, okay? That we had a lot less opt-outs. We had Taylor Green, right? But they had their all-American defensive end, didn't play. Their two starting safeties weren't playing there in the portal. They had a, actually a lot more. Uh, their quarterback in the portal as well. So, like, they actually had way more people sitting out than we did. And they, you know, anyways, there was this narrative that we were the more motivated team. And listening to our players and coaches, that's... And, and we, quite frankly, we came out, and I don't question the motivation whatsoever. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to just throw out this game and say, oh, or, you know, our quarterback wasn't there. It doesn't mean anything. Because the players and coaches took it like they wanted to win the game, okay? And what I wanted to go, not that I want to, but this, if we go into the into the off season without even having this bowl game, what are we all feeling? We got Super Spencer pumped. Danielson. Much we won better. three in a row, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> We, we, we play this bowl game, and the issue to me, and this w- what leads into the offseason, is that the main problems we had week one, now granted, they're in the playoff, against Washington are the exact same problems we had week 14 against UCLA. But not in that week second 13. Half. Okay, so, so that's part of the conversation, right? You and, I think the Mountain West Group of five was incredibly five weak team? this year. I know. I know it. And we were and we played a Pac twelve team and we can talk about the divide between the G five and P five <clears throat> all we want. And it's there and it's getting bigger. P four. Yeah, P four. But <laughs> that that game was a good thing in the sense that I think going into the offseason, I would like to think that the coaching staff and the program has their eyes wide open to what the issues are. Whereas if we just won that game and didn't have those issues, then maybe they're feeling better about they themselves? stay covered up. The issues stay yeah. covered up. Yeah, they stay covered. Because I think they did get covered up. The, emotionally, when Avalos left and we're playing crappy teams and we're winning and we, we kill UNLV. But the minute we play against a team that's physically superior, whatever, better coach, whatever you want to say UCLA is. I mean, the <laughs> the defense in the second half was a complete disaster, yeah. right? Yeah, you're right. And so... But um, it's not a vacuum. I mean, you could look at it and say... If the offense were driving, if the offense were having success, they would have more confidence, sure, which sure, seemed sure. to happen throughout the year. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, those same problems we were all frustrated with the first couple of weeks. They they back, didn't look any right better. back at. <laughs> and what happened in the second half? They had a good quarterback. Um, I don't even know a single any of the receivers. I don't know if they were good or not. But we didn't in the second half when they had their better quarterback in. We didn't have enough of a pass rush, and they beat us over the top multiple times. Yeah. Can we do another what if? What if we score touchdowns instead of field goals in that first yeah. half? Yeah. And, it changed, and, and I heard someone say that. It changes the mentality. Because UCLA didn't come out pumped up, ready to go. And somehow there was a switch that happened and the quarterback. Um, but if we score those touchdowns, not field goals, maybe we just knock them out, and it's we blow yeah. them out. It it maybe changes we, the, and the momentum entirely. totally, 100%. I agree. But we wanted to win the game. We had a bunch of starters playing. We didn't have people sitting out, and we got our butts handed to us in the second half. <laughs> you know, you know how and many so yards I they think had? we need to like we can't just shove how that many? under the rug. Five hundred and ten total yards. Yeah, that's, that's, that's nothing something. new to us this season. It's yeah. not. It's the same issues. We had three hundred. They were covered up for a few weeks against bad teams and high motivation, but ultimately our defense was ranked a hundred and whatever. And here's my biggest issue. And I'm not trying to be negative, Nancy. I'm just trying to be a realist. And we've had a couple of days to think about it. My issue is this, is that everyone's heard the, the saying, the definition, definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result, right? Okay. I'm not going to say that Spencer Danielson was a bad hire. We all accept, we thought that was a good hire at the time. I'm not going to go back on that at this moment. But from what we can tell at this moment on Tuesday, the 19th, what is it, 19th we are bringing back 80% of our staff from last year. There's been no more people leaving the trans- to enter the transfer portal. And we have no zero confirmed transfer portal players coming in. Signing day is tomorrow. <laughs> we went eight and six this year. Okay? I know there were some close games. I know we had a, 
so are you telling me that we went eight and six and the whole problem was Andy Avalos? Because we're bringing everyone else back. That <laughs> could be. I mean, I would, I would buy that if we went out and looked better against UCLA. But when the same problems persist that were the problems earlier in the year. But what if Mad Dog were playing in UCLA? Would, would we have looked like, would I, we have scored those touchdowns? It's a great point. I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm th- thinking more about the defense for sure. I just don't, and we've talked about this on and off throughout the year. We need to get more pass rushers and we need better cover guys. Yeah. Period. But but and what, where, what where are the what's your expectation though that they we we put Spencer Danielson as the head coach and automatically this thing just like we start getting awesome great players committing and we'll see we're we'll, magically a hundred times better. So no, I, and it's it's a short order, right? It's only been a couple of weeks. I'm just I, and I don't want to like I, it. Obviously, probably sounds like I'm raising the alarm here, but um, I just. I feel like we need some major upgrade in talent, and it's really hard to do that and expect high school kids to do that. And I'd like to see us – you see a lot – and I don't know. I'm not paying as much attention to it, but I just – you see very little out there on Boise State being involved in any of these transfers, and I'm just – and maybe we'll get some. But I don't know. I I don't feel super, super confident coming back next year with basically the same staff and basically the same players and say, oh, yep, we're going to go 10-2, and 11-1 and and be in the playoff. I I just don't see that, personally. I've got a question for you, Mark. Yeah. Um, Our defense, obviously, this last game gave up 510 total yards. Defense had issues all season long. Defense did not score any points. Did you, did you know about that stat? I knew about that stat. Any thoughts on that? You mean you're talking about the entire year? Yeah. Well, almost well. had a pick six in the <laughs> <You see? laughs> should have. Uh, almost should have. have. No, it's uh, no, it's the same. Yeah, I mean, no I, special teams touchdowns. No special teams touchdowns, touchdowns. No defense touchdowns. For, and that's the first time since 1984 that that happened. Yeah, we were born that year. Brandon we, was. I was born that year. Three. Yeah. Brandon's that's, old. And, and I'm old. Okay, I'm so old. Here, I remember that 84 season. That, was so that, season. <laughs> that, that brings me back to, and, and this is the guy I tried to remember when I was in the cold plunge. And I'm not here to call Yes, you jobs. are. Yes, you are. You already did. Okay. Demario Warren. That is, was his name. He, he is. D-dubs. He is the cornerbacks coach, and he's a special teams coordinator. And he's staying. When you talk about defensive and special teams scoring, that's his expertise, right? Most of those on defense are going to come from some linebackers, but DBs, and then obviously special teams. I, I don't know. I mean, one bad year. I don't, I don't remember how it was last year, so I, I'm not ready to fire a guy after one year. But again, it just goes with the thing. Like, okay, we're going we're gonna to hire him again. If we go back to the cold plunge, cold plunge footage, Brandon, did he want to get rid of him? Yeah, he did. I probably yeah. did, yeah, and, yeah. and I still do, but I, I – No. I, I, I don't was love about getting rid of people. I don't love firing people. No, I really no, no, don't. No. I'm not like sitting here sure. trying to fire anybody, but it's just like I don't feel like his units, his two units were up to snuff at all. No. And you're right. And so who made the decision to do fair catch on everything? Because Holani was returning punts and then got injured. And then it was um, Didn't we have Dudley returning some? No, yeah, well, Dudley was returning some kickoffs. But we had number five who was gosh, what I can't Cobbs. Remember. Cobbs. He was returning most of the time. He got hurt. And then it was just like we okay, just stay away from the ball or fair catch. It I think every that happened once. Avalo- I think they just s- said screw it. Like scrap we it. we're scrap it. Yeah, we are too not good risk. at this this year. Yeah. Too much risk. Just take the fair catch, which is like, dude, like you're just giving that up. It's no game well, changing plays. Yeah, zero. And <sighs> Boise State used to have like special teams that flipped the field, that flipped momentum. We didn't even try. We just put we were that, that all on our punter. Yeah, the punter was great, you know and the kicker funny? was great. You know what's funny? It's like college athletes are so good, right, at a lot of things. Sure. But then sometimes you just lose the confidence in doing basic stuff, like, you know, a, a punt return that high school and even middle school kids do. It's like I, we can't – we can't with the players that we have right now, we can't have enough confidence to th- catch again. a ball and return it 10 yards sometimes or like 20 it, yards on occasion. It I mean, they, they, they literally gave up. They didn't even I mean, try. Those so that are, tells me, like... <laughs> those things are cause for a lot of momentum, right? Yes. A lot of, and like, so hey, we, let's go do this. This is fun. This is exciting. Or fair you catch. need to change. You need to change it. In those situations, in my opinion, because I'm a professional college football coach... <laughs> slash analyst. 
slash analyst. <laughs> you just need to change it up. Like, like I'm going to go to golf. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. When your swing sucks, you need to do something way different, drastically different. And you just need to change something up so much that it's a new, it's a fresh start. The scar tissue of the past is no longer involved because you have different stuff going on. And whether that's new personnel that comes with issues or doing something exciting that takes your mind off it, but the, the punt return, the kick return, basically giving up on that. Okay. Which the kick return you have stats on taking it from the twenty five versus the twenty or before, you know, good. it it makes it a better chance of having a sustaining drive. But did did it all fall apart when we had the Austin Bolt waving debacle? <laughs> Ooh, that was that's that's that when it I went guess south? it makes it makes sense that they tried to yeah. they tried to mix it up a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the defense was obviously. It, it's like if we were to play in a playoff game somehow, we would get. The Destroyed. Mountain West, for whatever reason, the Mountain West football and basketball swapped. Yep. I mean, the, the football in the Mountain awesome. West is not was not good this year. Not even close. It hasn't been. For years. For and, years. and we are the leaders of that. We yep. are the leaders of that not being good. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> right? I mean, we set the tone of how good that conference is in a lot of ways. And so that needs to change if we want to survive. So how does? Yeah, anyway. I agree. How does it change, though? When say we make it to the playoff, uh-huh. even if we lose by a hundred, yeah. that gives us a bump mm-hmm. in recruiting, mm-hmm. in money, and all of that stuff. So that should be goal number one. Even if we get, even if they wipe the floor of us, yeah, it's like okay, give us a little bit of bump, momentum into the yeah. next year. Yeah, recruiting people want to come to a winner. Okay, now we get better guys. So it's like step by step. It, it's not going to be like we're going to win a playoff game next year, but you have to win double digit games early on and lose I mean who's our non conference schedule next year? Is it Oregon? It's tough, man. Oregon on the road. Okay. Georgia Southern on the road. Washington State, Oregon State, Portland State all okay. at home. All okay. at home. We gotta win One those loss. games. We gotta win One those home games. One loss. And then every other game, I mean if we used to have the expectation of winning those. Right? Yep. I think we can beat Oregon State and Washington State. We, we if we expect new to coaches, be in a playoff, we new should. players, <laughs> we should, we should, we have, we we really need to. And so, if we start, I mean, this is the way too early prediction. If we start, you know, five hundred on those games, yeah, it's like I don't know, man. I, well, I it's agree. Frustrating. Tommy Alquist doesn't think we can win those games. He already said that. Any of them? Those He's, three? He he said no Oregon State, no Oregon. We can't even expect to win those games. That's what he yeah. said. I mean, we can expect to win Oregon <laughs> and That's what Washington he said, State, dude. <laughs> like. You quit picking on Tommy, Mark. Come on. I just, it's, uh, I, I still, yeah, man, it's such a defeatist. Like, I don't expect to win Oregon. We should win home. They, we should never not expect to win a game at home. I don't, because we don't have anyone good coming in ever again. That's Let's true. talk about that in a second. <laughs> That's no true. one good is ever coming actually, to Boise State again. I actually want to talk to, <laughs> talk about Chip Kelly, discuss the, his statement. Okay. Because I love it. Yeah. I, I love most of it. Go ahead. All right. Well, so if you missed it, which I can play it, essentially there he's talking about. Look, football needs to break away from all other sports. Mm-hmm. He's talking about the Pac-12, the Pac-2, <laughs> the ghost of the pack. You know how all sports are going over to the Big Ten for UCLA, and he's saying no volleyball, basketball, all of those regional sports should play regional schools. Basketball, UCLA should play Arizona should play UC or whatever. Yeah. Uh, And football should break away. It should be its own league. It makes no sense why they have to be tied together. It makes absolutely no sense. Just because it was done in the past doesn't mean it has to be done now. Break away. He said he had a top 64 and a bottom 64. Okay, I get that. Add in relegation, which he did not say. It's never going to happen. Okay, it's going to happen. It's never going to happen, Okay, that defeatist attitude that you just criticized that. Are you the Get next off Tommy? of me, you dude. T- Come on. I'm just saying, I'll, I want I'll that be to the happen. Next Tommy, dude, totally. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Give me a helicopter. Give me a um, Come on, man. Anyway, I mean, he's just stating out what people are working on, essentially, right? It's break yep. away, mm-hmm. share the same TV contract, play. You know, he said, he, which Never gonna happen. I, I really liked how he said you have an East West yeah. or you have four regions, even in the individual conferences, and you say you play. Your region, eight games your region, and you play four in the east one year, four in the south one year, four in the north, all that stuff. And, yeah, may not happen or may happen sooner than us, than we think, but it 
it's stupid how we're not willing to advance that conversation like we weren't willing to advance the conversation of BCS going to a playoff, mm-hmm. which is the dumbest system. Mm-hmm. The BCS system was the dumbest, most only benefit the top people in the world. At the time it was happening, it was so stupid. And we're doing the same thing in college football right now where we just have this like fake system of conference realignment that makes no sense that it's like, oh, your football team can't be here because you're academics. And it's like, that matters at all. It doesn't matter at all. I agree. I agree 100%. Can I poke the holes in it that are are there? I don't know if I'm emotionally ready for that. You you want Mark to come in and just pop? Yeah, go. Poke poke as many holes. There's two problems. My, My first problem is he said, let's have a division of 64 power five and 64 group of five. Well, what's that? What about Boise State? Where do they sit? Group of five. Why? Is it? A, are you talking about problems for us or problems for the, in general? Yeah, problems for us. Sure. Okay, problems for us. I'll tell you why. We are irrelevant. Right. And and look, you have to have connections. So yeah, where Boise State should be, in my opinion, would be the Power Conference. Yeah, I would love that. In his in his little system, who decides who's in the top sixty four and who's in the bottom? Yeah, who decides that now? Right. And so rele- relegation. Right. It's good. Yeah, so relegation would work, but it won't ever work. Yeah, here. So that's the that's the issue I have is like, well, if you just did that because we've never been invited before, we're not going to be invited now. So we're relegated with no chance for promotion right. because it won't do that. That's right. problem number one. It's a the, it's the a, other big problem is the money. <laughs> the reason that these Power Five conferences are stealing from each other is all about money. That's why. The, so they're never going to say the ACC and the Big Twelve. They'd love it. Yeah, yeah. Let's just bundle all our resources. But the Big Ten. And the SEC will never do that. There's greed. They'll never say, okay, we'll take less so that we can all have this thing. I just don't believe they'll ever yeah. do that because that's why they're stealing teams right now. It's all about money. Who knows that they have to do that, right? Who knows if they would have to? That would be great. But I just, who knows? we'll see. Will there the, is going to be change. There's going to continue to be will change. Will the SEC and Big Ten just continue to get bigger and bigger yes. and turn into this that's, anyway? That's what I think will, will happen. Okay. So they, won't ha- they wouldn't have to give up any money then. Right, if they just keep taking their... Yeah, like, so they turn into a donut. So I, I just think... But we'll never be in that. That's it's a, my It's issue. a power shuffle right now. Mm-hmm. It would be a power shuffle in that scenario. Yeah. And possibly, possibly they could throw a bone to the little guys and say, because you have a group of five national champion, you could play your way into the upper league. That would be great. I'd be okay with that. I just, I'm not... <sighs> okay with that. I'd, I'd, I'd love that. I'd love that. <laughs> I'd love that. Sorry, I'd love that. I just don't... I'm not... Play group of five schools all season be, long it, and then work and your way in. Yeah. But that's the thing is right now, it's like we don't know. Five years from now, it's going to be different. Ten years from now, we just have to worry about right now and getting to a playoff in the next two years. That has to be goal number one, right? And then maybe if you get it to a playoff two years in a row and there is this reshuffling, maybe we're in a better position, right? Um, but doing what we've been doing <laughs> the last few years didn't get us in the Big 12 when they just expanded. And I'm, I'm convinced that if you're a top 15, top 25 program consistently again, that's your only yeah, chance. that's your only yeah. chance. We're, we're not on anybody's invite list no. right now. And for somewhat good reason. Yeah. I mean, so that needs to change. And that's where it comes back to, like, just every, everything we're talking about before, <laughs> staff and players. and San Diego State, weren't they like, hey, we're primed. We're going to go to. Oh, dude, they were like two days away. <laughs> two days away. Power <laughs> five and then they became irrelevant. The rug They're just four got and eight pulled or whatever. Their, yeah. It's really well, you know, look, I mean, in, in the defense of the school and the administrators, I mean, they're paying their coaches more. We paid a player to stay. Don't yes, give me that. that I mean, was awesome. Danielson was a specific case in that he was getting a huge jump from where he was at without any relevant experience in the yeah. head coaching thing. True. You know, I guess, excuse me, intern head coach worked his way into that position. So we played our main coach, coach, assistant coach. I don't know what the DC coach is making. Over 400. Okay, yeah, yeah, a which is a good jump. Yep. And then if Danielson produces, I'm sure they'll renegotiate no that doubt. contract to no whatever doubt. they want. Yeah. You know, whatever we can afford. And we paid, we're paying players to stay. So, I mean, the, the foundation is there. Mm-hmm. They just have to. And, you know, legitimately, we could have gone 12 and <laughs> – I mean, we could have had 12 and 2 season. Yeah. This and, and year, maybe, we could have done that, that. Maybe that's what they're saying is we were this close and the mismanagement of Avalos or whatever it was, bad luck, com- whatever – we're not as I mean, far we away could all from, go, we from what could we think. Legitimately, I'll go back to the season and say Colorado State, Memphis, UCF. Fresno. 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 Touchdown. 
special. Teams I mean, you could grab out. four games back and Easy, say yeah. we could have done that, but we've been twelve and two. Yep. Yeah. Three. Whatever the bowl game. Yeah, we we get the Washington game. We had the sand. Yeah, and the bowl and the bowl but, game. But power five schools. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I. Speaking but of I that, love that he coach brought it salaries. up. I love that he, I love that Chip Kelly brought it up. Yes, I love it's that he talked about it. Happening. Talk about it. Yeah, it's, it's gotten a lot of publicity. Uh, Should video yeah. clip. J Test did it. He asked the question. Pretty cool. Yeah, a lot of people seeing it. I don't know if it'll change things, but yeah, I just kudos I, to him. Unfortunately, I'm just being <laughs> having gone through this for 20 years now as a Boise State fan, and always being on just on the outside looking in. I'm not confident that any of the big changes coming up are going to benefit us. I'm okay. just not. Yeah. And so maybe there's a time and place where it's tr- truly broken off and we just have to be content almost like the FCS is now where you're just playing for your... But as of right now, that's not how it is. We still have a playoff to... So I got to say, no matter, Matt, mm, no matter what going forward, you got to be in the right position for this 12-team playoff. Yes. Right? Yeah. Because and you have to dom- if you're not looking beyond that, you're in a bad spot. So no doubt, you're not. We may not get in either way, but we're definitely not if we're. Yeah, and that and I actually and did a little or, bit of research this morning, guys. Oh, you actually did yeah. a little bit. You always you do research. Yeah, I, I do, I do, I do. But I, so I, I went back. So the way to do that is to dominate the Mountain West again, right? And even though we won the championship this year, and we know <laughs> we, we dominated did, we, we the Mountain West. We did not dominate. <laughs> did we, we went eight Colorado six. State. We backed our way in there. Some. I mean, it's totally. And that's awesome. 2023 is always going to have that that year is going to be on the stadium. We won the championship, but let's not pretend like it wasn't an eight and six year. Okay, I was looking at like recruiting stuff, and I used to look at recruiting a lot. If you remember, like five I years ago, I do remember it was and and then at nauseum, yeah. sickening, Mark. It was sickening, and then I started saying, ah, this is so stupid. Like you have these four star guys, they never pan out, whatever. But the reality is, when you look at recruiting rankings, the top teams are on, at the top, the bottom teams are at the bottom, and even conference wise, it's the same thing. Boise State dominated Mountain West recruiting for a long time. And I went in there this morning, 24-7 recruiting. And you can go to like a year and look at the whole conference. And this is really interesting. Up until, I didn't look at every every single year, but we dominated recruiting in the Mountain West for like eight or nine years. And they have like an average score number of your recruits and stuff like that. And we've actually maintained between like an 83%, 83 score and 85 consistently for like 12 years. Like nothing below, nothing above. The difference happened is really fascinating. 2021 to now is the difference. And I and so I started looking and I'll show you what I'll tell you what the difference is. Every year, basically before 2021, we were at least two points above the rest of the conference. Like we were in 84, the closest was an 82, and there were 79s and 78s, whatever. 2021 till now, first of all, right now we're ranked fourth in the Mountain West in recruiting. Last year. This year, right now, currently. How? Oh, with like our recruiting class? Going, to next yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, with a class that's verbally committed, right? Yeah. Actually, third. Um, average ranking were third, fourth gross, but that's stupid because that takes that's stupid. But anyways, the difference is from 2021 to now, we've stayed pretty much the exact same. All the other teams have jumped up. Like four or five of our conference mates have gone from average of 79, 8, 81 to 83s, 84s, and it's like now it's like statistically all this very close. And so it's like, well, we haven't gotten worse. Other teams are getting better. What's the difference? What happened? We've in 2021? gotten worse. We haven't gotten worse. We have gotten worse. Well, we haven't gotten worse in average number. We've gotten worse relative to everybody else. No, I guess I just don't necessarily trust those numbers as far no, as that's like, fine. Okay. That's fine. But there's no way to you know this is objective totally. numbers. I get it. I get it. Uh, the difference, that's a good point. Twenty twenty one. What happened was the transfer portal started. Okay. All the other Mountain West teams hit the transfer portal way more than we do, and we have swung and missed, and we. We don't have any good announcements so far, right? None. Zero. We had several transfer portal guys last year, and I don't know how they were they ranking wise. Out. None of them panned out. We didn't have a single difference maker. Look at Fresno State, their last two quarterbacks. Transfer portal, transfer portal. We and this is Dude. what made me sick about Avalos and is what I really cringe when I hear Danielson talking about. Developmental about it. program. I don't like it, dude. I, I, I understand you need to have a basis of high school and development. I get that. But, man, I just think that all the other teams are catching up, and we're not playing that game. We are not playing that game. And I 
I don't know how you dominate in the conference if you don't have better players and you don't have better coaches. And that's what we used to have for 15 years. It started with Cutter and Hawkins. We had better coaches than anybody. And then we won a lot, and then we had better players than everybody. Right now, you can't tell me we have better coaches. And statistically, we don't have better players. So what do we have? Blue turf? Like, what do we have? Mark Moss bringing it today. No, I'm serious. No. Just a culture. A valid point. Just like we history. Culture. Yeah, history, culture. Drive them with the rear view mirror. At every year that goes by, dude, the last three years, seven and five, ten and four with Cutter, and eight and six. The most Every year that goes by, since. it's like that's further and further in the past. So did Andy know. Avalos have a harder time winning? Because of the portal? Because because of, I don't know, our tradition, the Bronco way. It's like, did he did he embrace that too much and say he's going to rest on his laurels? Like the Because for a while, you could just like, like Harson, in some ways, just kind of continued what was happening. And then the world changed around us so much. Avalos is like, I'm going to keep doing what happens at Boise State. And then it like passed us by. Maybe. You know, hard work. OKGs, o- like, and that's all good. That's all important. I di- I don't know. I'm not going to say I have the answer. I'm just saying, this like, what's the difference? Why are the last well, seven years we losing all these games? You, you Why are we have... not dominating the Mountain West? Well, we don't have the best coaches. We have the middle of the pack as far as how much we pay our assistant coaches. We're right in the middle of Mountain West, and we don't have better players. Why do we expect to dominate the Mountain West? We how could you expect Colorado to dominate State. the Mountain West? Oh, you, guys, you guys have seen high expectations. <laughs> you guys right? have seen. Uh, Your fans are spoiled. Have you seen the clip interviewing Coach Prime when he's like, "We don't redshirt anybody." Yeah, right. Like we we bring people in. So that's that the have new already strategy. Been developed. And so it's like, who's going to do the developing? And if you look at a team like University of Idaho, for example, I know they're FCS, but everybody just fled. Right? Yeah. They had a great season mm-hmm. and they left. And so it's like, if you are a developmental program, are you developing these players? So that bigger schools can just pick them off and take them, because I don't want to be that school. You no. don't want to be. And and to your t- to their point, the whole development and the culture, the culture of Boise State has kept guys here. So I will give them that much, yeah. right? We haven't seen like the guys like Simpson and um, Virgin and some of those really good young defensive guys. If we didn't have a great culture, if they didn't love it here, they could totally. Well, leave. I don't think Genty would have stayed. So there is that. So I'm not. I'm not trying to say it's all bad. I'm just saying. I'm just bringing up the question of what do we need to do to get back to the top of the Mountain West? Because that's step one, and then step two is the top of the group of five to get to a playoff, right? And objectively speaking, I just don't. Something has to change. So if you look at my bas- if you look at basketball, the change was embracing the transfer portal. It and was. It wasn't embracing it from lower schools. It was embracing it from. And Nevada did this. They brought in power five guys. Eric, what is it? Eric uh, Musselman. Musselman. Brought in power five guys down to get more playing time to Nevada and had more success than those power five teams in March Madness. Mm-hmm. And so BSU's done the same thing. They bring guys like Cam Martin. Omar. Or Omar. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they brought, you know, Roddy up. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, bringing guys down. And so if you're Abu Danielson. From Oregon was brought down. Yeah. And yep. if you look at if you look at the players that are not playing on the Power Five and some of the top Power Five teams in the country, they're willing to move. I mean, they yeah, they've shown they're, they've, yeah. they're willing to yeah. move. And so, if you can pitch that, I mean, but if to your point, if you don't embrace it, then it's going to pass us by for sure. Because you can't take a freshman or a redshirt freshman or even a gray shirt freshman and compare them to a battle tested person Mm-mm. that is super motivated to get more playing time that was recruited at a high level. Right? Like yeah. a, like yeah. a second or yeah. even third string at a power five, maybe what we're playing with or maybe what our starters are right now. It's just, it's just a tough deal because I agree with you completely. And I think that's what they did last year is they got a kid from, from Utah defensive end. They got a, a safety out of Wisconsin. They got a kid out of Boston college. None of them panned out. You know what I mean? One quit, one's in the portal again, and one just got was injured that, and didn't do much. Pen, did Penry go in the – he didn't go Penry's back from Colorado. No. But and he didn't go – he's No, done. he was kind of injured. I think he's got another year or two, oh, but okay. it's not like he was some game changer. No. You know what I mean? It, it seemed in the past so, we did better, like, with picking up grad transfers, right? Like, we uh, had that – Tarless. Uh, we had that running back that played at Stanford. Yeah. He right? was okay. Yeah. He, I mean, he did okay you know. stuff, but – and the Oregon kid was a grad transfer. I, I'm just thinking about people that have come into the program lately. Who have we been really 
Well, excited there's the about. quarterbacks. It's the quarterbacks. You're talking right. about transfers. Anderson and, and uh, or anyone, anybody. Well, the quarterbacks that came in and helped out, Rippin and uh, Bachmeyer. Yeah, Cozart and Henderson. And Henderson. They were helpful. Uh, I don't know. I like we don't. I have mean, the Genty answer. burst onto the scene, but I don't know if any of us were just like, oh man, we just got Ashton Genty coming. Yeah. To. It's just I don't know. I just feel like there has to be some, you know. And here's the other thing: we talk about the portal and and Spencer Danielson. Like he he really and I I appreciate this from him. I think there's been a lot of chaos in the program, especially this year, but just under Avalos. And I think he is a. He's done his best to like get have a calming like, hey, I want to keep the coaches, I want to keep all the players, I want everyone to stay here. Which, I think they do need that calming influence. I think it's been super chaotic. So I can, on one hand, totally respect that. On the other hand, I didn't have time to do this, but there was, I think Holden McKee. There's some BSU Twitter guys that just go way deep into it on on Twitter fans, and I I think him and someone else said that they're right now going into next year. We have 70 scholarships already accounted for on our current roster. How many do you get? You get 85. We have 16 verbal commits. So that's 86. So you want, you question, well, why aren't we getting any transfers? Well, we're already one over. So <laughs> I don't know, man. Like most teams, like I said last, last time, like Utah, great program, great culture, great everything. They got 15 guys in the portal. Well, the coaches come to some of those guys and they say, hey, we don't really see you in the plans. You might, if you want to play, you might want to, and they mm. enter the portal. I hope we have 10 guys enter the portal. I hope we do. To make room. To make room. Yeah. And not many, 10 starters, not two, guys that are impact peop- players. I thought two people did enter the portal. Yeah. Do we have more than that? We've got McAllister we who already McAllister left. McAllister and Green are gone. There, there was, was a guy that guy. entered before the season started, like quit the team. Yeah. And who was that Boston mid-season. College guy? And then that. the Boston College kid. That's four. That's it. Four. Which is fine. I'm but not the compl- season just ended too. Yeah, so we'll see. But you need at least one, <laughs> right? But we're talking about transfers. Hey, we need another quarterback. But I don't know, man. Like, is it the best idea to say, hey, we want everyone to stay and everyone to be – well, <laughs> you need to go get impact guys. So what you're saying is second or third string – Leave. Um, defensive players that are higher in grade, like like junior seniors. Yeah. That are not playing their second yeah. and third string, you need to approach them and say, Don't that's what everyone else yeah. does. And is and is that still gonna happen? Probably. I would hope I would think so. But it hasn't happened yet. Yeah. And maybe it's because, you know, the bull hey, game. Hey, why didn't why but did, the, we need to we need to upgrade the talent, man? We all did, seen it. Why didn't Emac declare for TCU earlier? I don't know. Yeah. Was that odd? <laughs> it was odd because he left early. <laughs> he didn't do it right when the portal opened. No, he had like three weeks. Well, not only that, didn't it open right after Avalos left? Yes. So he could he have done have that been. immediately. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Would Avalos have taken <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's like, I can't coach there. Kind of <laughs> wild, dude. Be that there. whole thing was wild. That was wild. Do they, yeah, what's that first interaction like between those two? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> hey, buddy. A bro hug? And hey. Move on. Because Emac was kind of like... That, I don't know if it was a straw that broke the camel's back, but that was a big yeah, thing. Yeah, it was. And then Avalos came out and really threw him under the bus. Remember NIL, that whole thing. And then he he interviews with BJ and says, no, it wasn't NIL. And then a week later, Avalos is fired <laughs> from his dream job, his alma mater. Then they show up in Fort Worth together. So weird. Yeah. Conspiracy? No. <laughs> no. Ah, I think they're so. colluding. <laughs> well, you bring up a good point. And, you know, we've been talking about it all season on this pod. It's like... Do we want a, De- a Deion Sanders type coach or a combination? And more, more than anything, I mean, it took Leon a little while to embrace that. And uh, will Danielson be around long enough to make that decision if he already hasn't? So it'll be interesting to see. Spencer you know, Danielson probably is the least Deion Sanders type coach yeah. out there. I like Spencer. Well, so is Leon Rice. I, fingers right. crossed it works out. I, I just hope that they're having these conversations that we're having. I'm sure they are. I, they're, they're way better and smarter no, than us. No. It's not like this is we the first have time all the heard. answers. Yeah, no, I'm not trying to be like that at all. It just seems to me like you got to change your trajectory somehow. And if you're keeping 80% of the staff and all your players, what exactly are you doing to change the trajectory? That's my, yeah. that's just the honest yeah, question. Cuz you can't just hope that the other teams no. are going to get worse. And hope that your guys another year of development <laughs> does it. It's just the <laughs> other are. teams don't do it. <laughs> the Mountain West can the only Mountain be West so bad. Mountain West is bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. Uh, they're on a trajectory going downward. They'll keep doing it and there we'll just go. stay the same. Yeah. Anyway. 
man. Yeah, that's a bummer, man. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, kind of defeating or a little bit uh, depressing, a little Mark bit. If it's so not I did not happening. mean. To what do other that? notes do you have here, Mark? I want to talk about scheduling, but whatever. Whatever. Is you that because you got verbally said, thrashed? On, redeemed? Or did we already. We already talked about that. Oh, yeah, that's true. But I think there was some <laughs> redemption that happened. Did you? Did you get redeemed on Twitter? No, not redeemed. No, oh. no, 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 no. I will never get redeemed on Twitter. But you may... <laughs> <laughs> I'll step in it again before I get <laughs> redeemed. But you made comments as far as dropping the home games, right? The I did, and then less than a week later... We did what? What happened? Less, If you haven't heard... Yeah. Yeah, the Oregon home game that we've all been looking forward to got dropped. Yeah. Okay, and here's this. and I Because did, we I had to get, get on, money, right? I, we needed yeah. the money. I didn't get on Twitter and react to it because I think I said one. You did the smart thing, fact. Mark. Oh, I you texted away. Brandon and I. Yes, and 100% that was... better. No, I will say, I yeah. So I will say this, and I get it. It was not, other than Michigan State, Jeremiah Dickey, he wasn't at fault for the Florida State one. That was COVID. He wasn't at fault at BYU getting off the schedule because that, they, left. they left the conference and whatever. And quite frankly, it doesn't sound like he was at fault at all with the Oregon one either, right? We had a two-for-one. We were supposed to go there, go there twice, and they were supposed to come here once. And apparently they could have just bought us out for a million bucks and just canceled the whole thing. Um, but instead, they gave it, they're giving us $2.6 million to go there twice and get out of the home game. And it sounds like Jeremiah is basically, that was either that or cancel the whole thing and only get a million. So I get that. I understand it. I'm not blaming Jeremiah Dickey for any of those things at this moment. Here's my only point. My, here's my criticism, if you will, is, okay, all those crappy things happened that we're losing all those premier home games that people get super excited about. You've been the AD, he's been the AD for almost three years now. How many, what else, what, how have you scheduled beyond that? So you've had these things happen. We lost Power 5 home games. How many has he scheduled? I don't know. Zero. Yeah. He scheduled zero. His only schedule, and, and his argument is, oh, there's realignment. I get it. I totally get it. There's realignment. There's issues. There's other teams scheduling games right now. Our Power 5 there's teams. There's other group of five teams that are getting Power 5 home games right now. He has scheduled zero in three years. And I get it. So a lot of these things were out of his control that we lost. But that's my, and, and again, we've I've been on record. I think he's a great AD. He's doing a great job. But I think it's fair to say, okay, what have you done for scheduling? And to this point, he's done nothing. Okay. For who, Power who 5 home games. Who was the UCF game? Who scheduled that one? UCF. Was that that was before. Okay. And that was when UCF was still a group of five. Okay. So did it's you just, get that survey on the north end zone? I did. I did, I yeah. didn't click it. You didn't? No. Did you? Yeah, I yeah. filled it I out. I clicked it. And yeah, it yeah. was all uh, expensive. strength. Expensive. Well, it was expensive, but <laughs> it's like, what would entice you to buy these tickets. Yeah. yeah. And I said, uh, strength of schedule. Opponents. Better opponents. Over and over and over is what I said. Because for me, that is a lot more exciting than to see uh, New Mexico and UNLV and Air Force. And just, you know, if you're going to spend $4,000 per ticket. It was for expensive. The season, all yeah. Like, yeah. Which is fine. Like, to be honest, I think I, I loved it. I love that price range because... You know, for me, paying like it was like five or six hundred dollars to sit way up top, <laughs> and the, you know, I would just rather get a, a better overall game experience and pay a little bit more, but watch a quality opponent that motivates me to buy it. Sure, right? Certainly coming off a good season, but anyway, I thought I don't know how many people filled out that survey and said better opponents. I don't know. I, don't I, know. I think that that's. I think historically, at least. Now, granted, the, the we didn't have a great home schedule this year at all. And we had a lot of people at games, right. so that's awesome. Totally. But ultimately, people get really up for Power five, power 4 home games. Yeah. I mean, that's a big deal. They just, they just yeah. don't come that much. They just <laughs> and, and we had them on the schedule, and we lost them again. A lot of things out of our control. But I, I just think that those things, they needs to be the carrot for some of these fans and for, like, to get excited and get the city excited. And we keep losing them and not gaining any more. And it's disappointing. Right. And I'm not being overly critical. I think sure. that's okay it to say to, that. For you, does it have to be a top tier Power Five school, or would no. you take a lower? Would you take I think a, a name? Oklahoma State when they scheduled that was. Would you take a middle Vir of the road? Virginia or a we Syracuse? We had Virginia. We did. Yeah, any of them. I just Connecticut think, are they? UCon? UConn's not anymore. They're, not they're anymore. independent. Yeah, I think they were. Yeah, that doesn't have to be, and it could be two for one. 
Mm-hmm. Go there twice, come here once. I don't know. I just, and again, I'm not trying to say I could do the guy's job better. It's just like. No, that makes sense. It's just disappointing. Yeah, for sure. Those happen, and then we have nothing on the horizon. We don't have a single Power 5 home game on the horizon other than, like, I think Houston might be again. The but they're not. Well, power besides f- Oregon, on. right? Or, or, we don't have Oregon. That's what I'm saying. Excuse me. At home. At home. Excuse me. So, yeah. I don't know. It's just. Yeah, and you look at those that are scheduled, and you say, things can change so fast. You could also make the argument they they could change fast in our favor. Yeah. But how often do those games fall off? People, you know, realignment or whatever. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we don't have that game anymore. Yep. And and, and that said, tough. look what Liberty did this year. They played zero, nobody, and they're in the Fiesta Bowl. So if the goal is to get to the – we just spent 20 minutes talking about getting to the playoffs. Maybe that's, if the, that's strategy. the goal. Forget Power 5. It would just be nice every once in a while to have a Power Might 5 Might as well game. schedule Idaho, right? I totally think we should schedule Idaho. I've been on record saying that. I would love to play Idaho. That would when, be some when we're better. Yeah, and, and fans are coming no matter what. So, True. But I just think it would be fun. It would be a little rival. I mean, I know it's not a rivalry anymore, but that used to be – we all grew up here. That used to be huge. Yeah. And I would love to play Idaho here but again. Would you take Idaho over Georgia Southern? 100%. Yes. Yeah, or mean, Portland State or Eastern yeah. Washington or any of those teams that are on our schedule. Why not Idaho? I, I don't get that. I don't understand that. That makes sense. I mean, we played Idaho State a little bit ago with Kellen Moore. Yeah, that yeah, that's in, the same. That's, that's inside. But, that's, I, but I'd re- prefer that than Portland State. What does Portland yeah. State bring to our home schedule? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, you know, North Dakota this year? That, yeah. I don't know. But that said, the schedule next year, positive. Awesome home schedule next year. It, I mean, the, the, the conference games next year at home are great. Uh, San Diego State's here. No Air Force at all. We That's play, awesome. We play Nevada. We play right? Utah State here. Nevada here. That'll so be like interesting some of the, with Choate. Yes, Choate and Ione. Or whatever. Ione. Um, and then we get Oregon State, which was previously scheduled. And then we get Washington, Washington State, State as that kind of extra, you know, with the merger type of thing. That's home. In, yeah, that's that a is home, home. game. So, and I don't know if Jer- maybe Jeremiah Dickey pushed hard for that. So too. maybe that's his power five. But maybe that pack. is. There you go. Credit, credit I mean, that was, too, right? Apparently the conference did all that, but I would assume he was lobbying yeah. for that game to be at home. Yeah, we've got Washington State, Utah State, San awesome Diego home, State, home Nevada, State. Oregon State. A lot of different yeah. state colleges. A lot Portland of different state. Portland State even. Portland's not a state. What's the worst game other than Portland State, which is the FCS, which we're doing what's one of those What's the worst home game? What's it, outside of that, what's the worst home game? I don't know that there's anything bad. I mean, you could say, I mean, Utah State, that's not but a But that's bad kind of game. a little bit of a rivalry. I mean, Nevada going would be exciting. We yes. haven't played them in a while, no. right? Yeah, no, it's a great, ske- great schedule next year. So, yeah. Don't so, get your be, tickets. Get, get your tickets. I think there's going to be a lot of tickets sold next year. I really do. We go to Hawaii. Haven't been there in a little and bit. And go to UNLV. That one might be fun. The UNLV game? Yeah, go to Vegas. Go to that game. Are you going to go to Oregon? No. no. We're going to I I'm sorry. Me and Tommy are in the same boat. We're going to get blasted by Oregon, dude. Blasted. We're just you remember not, when we went to Oregon with Kellen? Oh, and it was like a breakout? We, yes. Do you think we could ever catch that lightning in a bottle ever again? Who do we have? We had like Jeremy Avery. We had yeah, we have Jay Jeremy Childs. We had a bunch, yeah. Pereira. I mean, I mean the Jerron difference Johnson. was we Kellen great. Moore. That the was difference was difference. Kellen and the difference was coaching. We we had one of the best coaches ever. Yeah. Pete and his staff was awesome. And no offense to Spencer. We just don't. We had a better coaching staff than Oregon did. Yeah. We don't. I, there's no way you could say that now. Dan Lanning or Spencer. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's just not there. <laughs> I mean, anything what? can happen. Look at Mark. <laughs> look at Mark. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. All what right. Is, what do you look forward to? Like we, you know, started. That's okay. I'm yeah, started man. Talking. I'm taking a bunch of down pills yeah. over here. We started this podcast back in late August, I think. Yeah, right. S- f- week before the couple season. Couple weeks before the season. Yeah. A week at least. We were talking about things we were looking forward to. Yeah. Can we do an early, what are we looking forward to in 2024? After all that, I, that, I did go negative. Yeah, today, didn't Mark. I? Brandon, what are you looking forward Golly, to? Uh, let's just, I, I do have some good let's stuff, just uh, double digit just... wins. Okay. Double win all of our home games, double digit wins, and get in a shot of the conversation of of a playoff. Be mentioned a little bit again <laughs> nationally. That would be nice. Trend nationally versus just locally. <laughs> that would be cool. I mean, it could happen. It couldn't it could happen just as well as any as any other year. I'm and next year's the a good year to do it. Yeah. So why not? I it mean, Mad Dog's up. decent. If we got Genty's back, that's how, that's good. Yep. Let's say we it, fill it some holes. Mad. Bolt. 
Bolt. Yeah, Bolt's Strong. good guys. Strong, they're good. You yeah. know, we got we have uh basics. The basics. So you just need you to supplement them. Yeah. Plug some holes and the DBs. Get some special teams going. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, think it we, could happen. After all that, the nice thing is the group of five is wide open next year, I think. Yeah. Tulane lost their coach. Um well, and, Liberty, and, come on, give me a break. Uh seriously. I mean, I don't know what their schedule is next year. Do they go 13 games without playing a good team again? Maybe. I don't know, maybe but, but the transfer portal changes so many teams' dynamics yeah, you so much, know. right? And who knows? Like, you can you get like a quarterback. I think that we should be in the hunt. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Okay. Right, so I'm, exci- I'm, exci- I'm right. excited about next year. The home schedule is awesome. I'm excited about that for sure. Um, Dude, Liberty has to play the Campbell, Campbell Camels, Mark. Seriously? Do they have anyone on their schedule? Anyone. This is only showing five, four weeks. Okay. okay. It doesn't have their conference then. Do they, who, what's their out-of-conference schedule? So East Campbell? Carolina. They play Campbell, the Camels. <laughs> East Carolina. At Appalachian State. Okay, Appalachian that, State. that's a decent group UMass. of five team. And UMass. UMass. <laughs> See, that's so pathetic. Dude. It's so pathetic. They don't even try. They don't even try. Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm well, excited. anyway, next year could be good, just like could, any other year, so, right? Yeah, totally. So is So I think the last uh, – or another topic – uh, is Mad Dog the guy? Is he is he our starting well, quarterback we de- week we one? We definitely didn't see enough out of Tiller to say whether he's the guy. Or we didn't not. see enough, and not that anybody's saying he is the guy. But I think you had a lot of people jump on. We're gonna suck next year because Tiller didn't do anything, or Danielson. We no. brought him in, and now Tiller. Like, I those don't people agree with that. are nuts. I think yes, to make I agree. Those, I don't know those statements, but yeah, Tiller was he threw the ball just a handful of times and. You can't, you can't get a good read for a quarterback that's only doing that's only handing the ball off. Yeah. So if it is Tiller, you know maybe it is, and he's got the off season to work on that. But you, I saw on Twitter you had said maybe August first for well, Mad Dog. Were you making that up? Is that no? Like I didn't false? make that up. Danielson. So okay. So Mad Mad Dog's little brother went on Twitter or brother. I don't know if it's little or or older. Tall, went on Twitter. Taller brother. I don't know. Probably taller. <laughs> Went on Twitter and said, my brother doesn't have a torn ACL. Ooh. That's what his brother said. He's okay. just out for nine months. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, the okay. The exact amount of time to recover so for an like, ACL. Oh, great. Awesome. And then it's like, okay. Well, I'll believe him. I don't think, why would he lie? But Spencer Danielson was asked about the timeline, and he said, the goal is August 1st. And then there's some people saying, oh, he'll be back for spring ball. The dude's in a massive brace from ankle to his hip and hasn't he's on crutches still, at least as of last week in bull prep. So And he had surgery. He had surgery. What I else? don't know. If he didn't tear his ACL, there's only a couple options, other things that it could be. Either way, it doesn't really matter. It was a massive knee surgery. And he so he's he's not gonna be back fully with the goal being August first. So <laughs> That's a, you know, I mean, big Cameron deal. Rising from Utah was supposed to be back August 1st. Yeah. He didn't play all year. Yeah. So you you need to go and get a grad transfer. Uh, you have to. Yeah. Even if Madsen was ready to go in spring, I think you need to get you need to get another quarterback yeah. just for numbers. I don't know who they get. I think they, they like Madsen. And I don't, I actually, yeah, we didn't see enough from Tiller. But I certainly didn't see enough to say he's not good. I just think Bush, like, really went really conservative, but he had a couple plays, that two-point conversion where he ran around and threw that one, and uh, Strong just had a bad kind of, yeah. you know, foot there. Like, there was some things in that. He had a couple throws. Where you're like, ooh, that, that was, he had some zip. And, Strong, I think. Yeah, so they going into this year, they kind of said, at least Avalos, who knows, but he was saying that the battle for the number two spot was between Mad Dog and Tiller. Yeah. And it went for like three weeks in a camp. It, supposedly, and then said, oh, Madsen, we're going to give him the number two rep. So they were supposedly fairly close. Um, you know, Mad Dog played well this year. His numbers were, were pretty good. They so, played well. I yeah. mean, he ran it. He threw it pretty well. The offense seemed to hum a little bit. Yeah, I think – and he has enough mobility. He does remind me a lot of Grant Hedrick, and he was a great, great quarterback. quarterback here. Great quarterback. And I we make – we we joke a little bit. I don't really care if he's not that tall. He's He's quick. And, of course, knee surgery, I don't know. Does that impact that a little bit? But um, I do think they need to go get another quarterback, though. Yep. It will be great if they get a, one that would compete for the starting job. Yeah. Not just an arm, but, like, one that's, like, and there's 80 of them still out there. There's yeah. a lot of them still out there. Yeah. 
you know, in, in the coach's defense, they were just bull prepping. They were just doing a lot of stuff. I, you know, yep. who knows what could happen. So I guess give yeah. time, right? Yeah. Hey, can I bring up a bring up something? A yeah. comment that was left on our last video. Yes. Craig Peterman said <laughs> listening to our podcast is like listening to three old women. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Brandon yeah, took I, that one personally. Brandon replied to that. I did. I, said, I didn't take it personally. I actually agreed with them. <laughs> you said we're all <laughs> we're all hitting menopause at the same time. Yeah, I mean it's a it's getting a little warm in here. It's a change in life kind of cycle. And look, I get it. He should get it. I get it. He didn't respond to you. No, I'm all right. Old with it. women. I mean, I actually didn't take older. any offense to that, but I do worry about talking over each other. And you know, when you when it's just a conversation that just happens, it does happen. Um, and I'm, I'm the worst of it. I probably just did it right there. You just did it right there, I did it right there. dude. <laughs> <laughs> this is problem. Dude, Craig is gonna get all over you. Yeah, Mark. Craig's gonna do it. Can we talk basketball? Yeah. Wow. Gotta... Nobody wants to talk basketball. Net <sighs> seventy five, I think, in the Ken Palm rating. Are we moving up? We're in or the down? top hundred. I think we're in top Improving. eighty. We have a twenty game win streak at home. Twenty game win streak in at home. And some people are saying this next game against Washington State is a battle for the bubble. Which I don't necessarily agree with. It's too early. Too early. Look at you go, Mark. It is. Uh, it's too early, but some people are saying Washington's kind of where Boise State's on the up. Washington's struggling a little bit. I don't course, think they're struggling. Well, they I think they draw. Losses. I think they. What, what are the last they're three games? Ranked, they're higher ranked than us. I know, but what are the last oh, three games? I guess I don't know. I'm just reading off what I remember from Twitter. But anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's odd to say that we're doing really well just because we play a few patsies. But we did beat, beat, beat North Texas. Uh, we did beat St. Mary's, who's a good mm -hmm. team. And then we had a couple. Cal State, Fullerton. We beat Cal State, Fullerton. And we beat Northwestern, Western Oregon. Northwestern State, Western Oregon, yeah, North so. Texas. St. Mary's. So that's yeah. five in a five row. Five in a row. We lost to Butler. That and then the Washington loss. State. What are their last few games? Um, Washington State. Let's we don't have any bad losses this year, which is different. Washington State lost to Santa Clara. The last game? Their last game, they lost to Santa Clara. They beat Grambling. They beat UC Riverside. Nobody really of no. Yeah. So haven't been as tested as we are. Yeah. So who knows? Big game up in Spokane, right? Yeah, you know, maybe maybe Rice has it back, you know. See how it goes. But uh, last time we beat Texas A&M, great win. You know, we beat Washington State up at Washington State a couple years back. That was an awesome win, too. So uh, it'll be awesome to get this win. Colorado State, I think, is ranked 16th. That's going to be a great home game. They're coming into town. And so I think the conference, it'll be anybody's guess how we do in the Mountain West Conference. Because I think there's four teams that are up there. That Obviously, San Diego State. Obviously, Colorado Obvious, you know, BSU is a good team. Um, Nevada and Nevada New and New Mexico and, Utah State and are all and higher Utah than State. us. Yeah, which is it. I think it's going to be a great league. It, we know it's going to be a great league, so it'll be it'll be really interesting. Yeah. What do we need to finish? Do you think like in the conference? In the conference to have a legit like mm, that's a good question. Uh, see, you know, uh, at large, you think top three? Know, you think and three we're pretty team, safe? Yeah, I mean, three is a good number. Yeah. I think four or five, you're starting to get like serious bubble yeah. like crap. We may not be in a good spot. Um, you have to beat, you have to hold serve on so many of these teams. You have to beat them at home. How awesome is it to be in a league? That's why basketball is so much better in football. In this, like, we're in a league that we don't have to go undefeated. Yeah, you know, and the Mount West is so strong. We could finish third, maybe fourth, and get to the tournament. Like, yeah. how awesome, awesome is that? Like, it yeah. it, it makes it like. Yes, every game counts and matters, but it's like you can lose one or two, you know? <laughs> you don't have to be so depressed after yeah, a loss. No, it, it, it's, <laughs> or, it's or awesome. Or if you're ranked number one going you're into guaranteed, the tournament. Guaranteed. No, ranked. but if you, like, lose, right, to, like, an eight seed or whatever oh, yeah. in, in your conference tournament. Yeah. And then your hopes are gone because you didn't win your conference tournament. Oh, right. But, it, right? Yeah. but with us, you don't have to. Yeah. yeah. You win the regular season you're in for sure from the Mount West. I mean, looking right at now. it from here, Mount West would get a number of teams in the tournament if, if mm -hmm. it ended today. Yeah. Probably and we wouldn't be one of them. Four. And we wouldn't be one of them. Maybe. And we could still win. What, what's the ranking right Well, there's no yeah, conference we, ranking right now. Our ranking, we would, we're not nearly high enough. I, th I was asking um, someone about it. It's like your Ken Palm needs to be in like the 40s to feel good about an at-large. We're like in the 70s a or 80s. As a group of five team. 
or anyone. I mean, it's it's everyone has the same, you know. Well, Ken Palm numbers. Well, they have yeah, they have sixty teams that they. <laughs> That yeah, they allow in, well, so. I know, but 30 of them are automatic bids. So a lot of those teams from uh, small schools are like 130. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? So. Well, I'll be, I'm, I'm super intrigued to see how we do against Washington State this Thursday. This Thursday. And then, obviously, going into the tournament play, those first eight games. <laughs> yeah, we've got Washington State at home on Thursday. Utah Valley at home on Not, you saw Washington State's in Spokane. In Spokane. Oh, so yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's away. neutral site. It's, yeah, it says at. My bad. Yeah, it's in Spokane. Then Utah Valley's coming to Boise State on Friday the 29th. Then we're at San Jose State on the 5th. And then you, back here, Colorado State on the 9th of January. And that's Woo. the other thing is, as good as the, as the conference is, like, you really don't want to drop games to, like, Fresno and San Jose. And you know that those teams will good, yeah. bump up and get some wins. You, yeah. you really don't want to lose to Air don't Force. Don't be that one. <laughs> yeah. And then you probably you probably do lose one or, one or two. Though. You don't want to lose a bunch because you're going to lose to Colorado State there, or, you know, or San Utah Diego State. State. San, if you split those games, you're feeling good about yourself. You just have to win those other ones for yeah. sure. So that's what makes it exciting. I'm, I'm totally excited for the for And the it's basketball a great season. atmosphere at the arena right now. Yeah. It's an incredible atmosphere. A lot yeah. of people it's only going to get better. Conference. I went yeah. on, so you have season tickets. You do too, right? Yeah. I went on to get tickets to the Colorado State game, and there was very few in the lower bowl, and I like the lower bowl. I really do. I mean, second level is okay, but I I clicked on them. That's where Matt sits. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, it's, you know, it's just a close. It's better. Dude, it's, but you're, you may go to the third 70, level. Dude. 75 Finish. bucks for yeah. one ticket. Yeah. So on the on the website, I did mine. I did the poor man's uh, season tickets, yeah. right? The flex pass is what it was called. What's that? I do? think before that it was called the blue collar pass. Oh, so it's they bounce you around. Yeah, and I had done it. I think during COVID year, uh-huh. and we, I think mezzanine was the l- highest up they ever put us. Oh, you're going. And I think me. it was in that season, probably because of COVID, they didn't really ever open up the balcony. Yeah, and so we did get put down in parquet in the orange seats for one game. That was the closest we ever got. But so far this year, all balcony. All balcony. Ooh, yeah. Not a surprise. Balcony's and it's not going to get better. <laughs> no, it's not going to get better. And it's going to be harder and harder to find those open seats that we kind of migrate down to, <laughs> you know? I brought my wife, like 10 years ago. I, wait, <laughs> that was embarrassing. What? I, uh, <laughs> we like took it, like, I, you we got did that all the time. You seats, Mark? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and like, it was like a date night. Like, me and my wife, uh, and we brought like another couple. And we're like, oh, we always go. <laughs> yeah. So we go down there, and like it's third quarter. Oh. Someone shows up with their seats in the third quarter. Did you scout them out the whole we game? We got booted, dude. Or did so, you just pick some? No, yeah, I watched the like. But the at least you got the first half, two. You know, first fifteen minutes, and then yep, they're open. We go down there. Shortly after halftime, dude, they show up. <laughs> of course, we just so I was embarrassed for like another, with another couple. So we just like. I mean, there's so many open seats. We just went down one row and over. Oh, okay. But it was embarrassing for sure. Yeah, conference play, that thing's packed. Yeah. And this season yeah. early, it's been packed. Dude, uh, BSU fans, been doing well. Both sports. Both sports. They even like soccer. And soccer. Yeah. yeah, I've gotten some soccer games. My daughter plays soccer. And uh, so maybe that the bump, there. Maybe awesome. that Maybe that bump in population is starting to show. And think, in, about, think about if you if we like go on a run, like it's in football especially. Yeah. Like. I know that, yeah. And I could this. go huge. We talked on about that. this. Yeah. Like if we if we go ten and two next year and get to a, uh, the playoff, dude, season tickets for next year would really skyrocket. Yeah, I, I really feel that way. I agree. And they, I know that there were a lot of fans at football games this year. I do think that a lot of credit needs to go to Dickie and his staff because I think they did a great job of getting tickets out somehow. <laughs> Um, like through the schools, and there was a lot of probably promotional types of things, which, hey, that's what you got to do get people there. It worked. But it would be great if sometime down the road it's like, hey, people are paying full price because that helps fund the fund yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah, nonetheless. I got to wrap this up, boys. Yeah, we got work. God, got to get back to work. take off. So what happens oh, when we do this in the middle of the day? Yeah, geez. Brandon's going to get that music going for us. <laughs> oh, wrong button. There we go. Oh, man. If you're listening in your car, you want to bump this, right? <laughs> or if you're just watching this in your cubicle at work, turn it up. <laughs> Tell your folks. Yeah. Kin folk, folks, whoever it is. If you're watching us on YouTube, like, subscribe, share with your folks. All that stuff. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next time. Peace.